everybody, Resmatter here, and welcome to part 8 of my Corpse Party Book of Shadows Let's Play. In the last episode, we got into the next chapter, which uh, follows Naho and her friend Sayaka before the events of them getting to Heavenly Ho. So Sayaka, I am imagining she probably was at least brought up in passing in the first game, but this is something that was new at least, or I couldn't remember, was that Naho didn't go to Heavenly Host herself. She actually brought Sayaka, her best friend, in because she needed someone else to do the uh, the charm with her. So it's interesting to already kind of see Naho, like her, her thought process. And people did bring up that because Sachiko has been following Naho around, she's been darkening before she even got to Heavenly Host. So that could affect, you know, her thought process of basically being obsessed and wanting to help her sensei, Kibiki, uh, get the data that he needs for like the big scoop, but still kind of fucked up that uh, she dragged her best friend into this. So now they have gone over to Heavenly Host and um, judging by how the chapter started, uh, things are not gonna go well for Saig, I imagine. So let's get more into this chapter and let's see how those events transpired. <laughs> I felt dust or sand filling my mouth, and I sprang to my feet, choking. I was in a cold, dark room. It was damp and clammy and felt very much like a cave. Was this the heavenly host elementary Naho was telling me about? Naho-chan! <laughs> Racked with apprehension, I tried raising my voice, but barely had one to raise. I looked around, but didn't see Naho anywhere, and there was no response. Uh, poor Saiga, she's just trying to be a good friend, and look what happens. I wanted to go home, to forget this place existed. But then I realized I'd never asked Naho how to cross back over. Without her, I was stuck here. <laughs> so that was my top priority then. I absolutely had to find Naho. I'm sure she hadn't accounted for the possibility that we'd wind up in different spots once we got here. But as long as I could track her down soon, I knew everything would work out. Famous last words. I stepped forward slowly and carefully and took a closer look at my surroundings. Oh my gosh, we're actually getting to do this again. It's been a while since I've actually been able to go into, like, gameplay mode other than making choices. Okay, is there anything at all for me to look at? There's a lot of stuff in this room, but apparently nothing I can select that I can see. That is one thing I will say about this game that is a little bit of a downside, is you think for, like, a point-and-click game, there would be more you could actually click on. Like, I'm not seeing anything. It's been a while, I was like, I can't quite remember how to do this. Alright. So despite there being a ton of stuff in that room, apparently nothing is of interest. This door, come on. Like, really? No comments about the fact that the door is super bloody looking? Okay. Ah! Ah! 
Wall? Well, not going that way. Well, there I can. The path here is completely blocked with rubble. There's no way through. <laughs> oh no! Well, it's already starting. Kagome, Kagome, bird in the basket. When, oh when, will you come out? Will it be in the evening of dawn? The crane and the turtle have fallen, so who is it that stands behind me? What is it about kids singing that's really creepy? <laughs> oh, are you, is there a child around here? We're just gonna keep on keeping on. And can't go this way. Obviously. I mean, there's nowhere else to go, but always good to check everything. Okay, so... Oh, death room! Cool, that's where we should totally go, is the death room. Oh, we got a body. It's a half-decomposed body holding its own head. Interesting. Based on the uniform, this was almost certainly a female student, but age is much harder to determine. Her name tag identifies her as Senior High, though. Matsu uh, Matsukaze Prefectural High School. Tomomi Isamura. The door is thoroughly sealed. There's no way to get inside. Well, considering it's a death room, maybe for the best. Ooh, it's locked up tight. And a body pool. Oh my gosh, the names just get better and better. You may proceed, you may proceed. What narrow path is this? It is the path of the heavenly host. Oh, she's getting... Alright, what's her darkening at now? 22%. I just got here. Cool. Surely a trip to the body pool will help with the darkening. Door is sealed firmly shut. There's no way to open it. Yeah, for her sanity, probably for the best. Oh, that's really creepy. Just like someone struggling to get out and they didn't make it. There's a recently deceased corpse here. Oh, recently. Yeah, it definitely doesn't look like it's fully composed yet. Her hands are outstretched, as though she were trying desperately to dig her way through the wall. There's a student ID name tag on her uniform. Komashiro Trade School. Sexy Hagiwara. I gotta be careful. If I keep uh, doing this, I'm gonna be... Getting to my 100% darkening very soon. Ugh. Let's play. Come and get me, I'm over here. No, I'm over here. I could hear children calling for me, hiding and goading me to find them. Oh no. No, I don't like that. Now they're like directly talking to me. Ah! Ah! Oh, hate it, hate it, hate it, hate it! Hate it. Another body. This one also doesn't look like it's too decomposed. A recently deceased corpse. Based on the uniform and various accessories adorning the body, this would appear to have been a female junior or senior high school student. Her student ID name tag is still fully visible. Karasuyama High School, Shihoki Usaki.
Are you ready yet? Not yet. Are you ready yet? Not yet. I wonder if the more I explore, the, the kids are just gonna like jump out at me. I could hear the voices of children playing. Oh. Oh no. Ah. Uh. The lights flickered and I could swear I saw something up on the path ahead. Hopefully just my eyes playing tricks on me. Please? Mmm. Wonder if I should be going that way. <laughs> I don't think there's much choice. Ooh. Ooh. God, that got me. <laughs> but yes, let's go the way that that, that that spirit is. And we're going to the bathrooms, because we all know the bathrooms. Seem to be a place where spirits like to hang out. The door is sealed firmly shut. There's no way to open it. Man, the boys' rooms, you can never get into the boys' rooms, it seems like. Let's see about the girls' room. Oh, it's open. All right, is this the one that Yuka went into from the first game? Is this, maybe we'll run into Yuka here. No, no, wait, this was beforehand. No, this is like back before all the other kids got brought here. I'm in a cave and there's a bathroom here? No matter how I looked at it, nothing about this place seemed like an elementary school in any way. But there were lights in the ceiling and support beams to prevent cave-ins, so it certainly wasn't a naturally formed cavern either. I mean, there was even indoor plumbing down here. Oh, creepy that body behind the door. <laughs> no thank you. I actually did have to go, but there's a limit to how dirty and disgusting a bathroom stall can get before I just refuse to close myself in there. Guess I just have to hold it. Hello, little creepy body. There are skeletal remains here. It's a small child. Maybe she was hiding. There's a name tag attached to her jacket. Renaissance Elementary School. Mina Nishio. Nothing else? Okay. So we just have the hall here, and then I gotta figure out where to go. Ooh. Why? Why? Save me. Help me, please. It hurts. Please stop. I could hear the voices of children who seemed to be in pain or distress. Eh. Where else can I go? I just want to get out of here because I hate how they're talking. Shoots, I... I don't know where to go from here. We're just gonna head back this way. I just want to, like, not have those voices in my ear. Thank you. I'm gonna check the storeroom again. Like, is there, there has to be something. Like, I must be missing some sort of... An item or something to to get me like what what percentage I'm at 39% okay my so I think I've explored everything I've gone everywhere that I can I've checked there I've gone that way can't go into the death room pretty sure pretty sure I went this way as well so I'm not quite sure maybe I didn't go this way either way it looks like a dead end so I'm not quite sure where what to do I could hear children laughing. Ooh, among the voices, I heard the sound of a door opening somewhere nearby. Oh, I guess I have. I guess I haven't been here. This sounds like a place I don't want to be, but I don't have much choice. Yeah, this is definitely. I haven't been here yet. A foul-smelling, rotten corpse here. Based on the uniform, it was probably a male high school student in life. He seemed to have died sitting down, though he doesn't look very relaxed. There's a student ID name tag on his chest. Karasuyama High School, 
Doki Kamamizu. Okay, so I, I oh looks like the death the death room opened up. Okay, shit. <laughs> oh, this body looks quite fresh. Uh, should I keep looking at bodies? I'm at forty two percent darkening. I'm gonna do it anyway. There's a fully decomposed corpse here. She's wearing a skirt, so it seems safe to assume that this was a female student in life. Her name tag confirms this. Shobu University Middle School, Hinaka Maguri. All right, let's go to the death room and let's see what awaits us there. Nothing good. I didn't think this place could get any darker, but this room proved me wrong. It was completely and utterly devoid of all light. My only indication as to its size was the bloop bloop sound of dripping water from somewhere inside. And based on the echo, it didn't seem too big. I was perfectly content to leave it at that, honestly, but I couldn't, because I knew Naho might have been in there, seized with fear and panic. She usually kept a cool head, sure, but I'd just seen what she looked like when she didn't, and it worried the hell out of me, so I had to know. No response. Not that I heard, anyway. That dripping wasn't very loud, but it echoed enough that it could conceivably obscure the sound of a person's voice. As long as I kept the door to this room open, though, the pale light of the corridor would filter in, and I'd be able to see the exit. I bet as soon as she walks in, the door is going to shut behind her. It may not have illuminated much, but at least I'd be able to find my way out in a pinch. So I swallowed my fear and walked into the darkness. Oh no. Without thinking, I smacked my hand against my leg as if trying to knock off whatever was stuck to it. Met metallic smell was so thick that I almost couldn't breathe. Was it blood? Did I just wipe blood onto my hand? No, it couldn't be. I got a sudden itch on my thigh, so I impulsively reached down and scratched it. Ew, I wonder what that could be. <laughs> and in doing so, a small rice-sized bead stuck to the ball of my finger. But in this all-consuming darkness, I had no way to tell what it is. I'm guessing it's either like flesh or maybe like a piece of like a tooth or something. Ooh. It felt an awful lot like a grain of rice though, even smushing and smearing like one when I nailed it between my thumb and forefinger. I'm guessing flesh or like maybe an eyeball. No, an eyeball would be way too big. Their source of the horrible smell was suddenly clear. The room was absolutely drenched from wall to wall and ceiling to floor with blood and viscera. That word viscera, it's so cool but so creepy at the same time. How many gallons of blood must there have been to coat this entire room? Hmm. 
And the worst part was, none of it was dry. It was all wet. It was all fresh. There was indis uh, indistinguishable chunks of flesh and bone everywhere. Just what kinds of twisted things was this room being used for? Scratched my itching thigh again with my finger, then looked down at my legs, and all at once my blood ran cold. Oh, oh, it's maggots. A swarm of little white bugs was wriggling around on both my legs. Ooh. Ooh, I never would have... I didn't even think about maggots. Of course, grains of rice. That makes sense. That's what I'd squished between my fingers. But there were so many, many more. And they were also in my skirt, on my socks, even inside my shoes. Oh, that's awful. Ugh. What an image. I fell into a state of total panic. I threw off my shoes and began frantically brushing myself off with my arms. I grabbed the hem of my skirt and the collars of my socks and shook the hell out of them too, trying to knock off as many bugs off my body as I could. <sighs> Stumbling around, I, ac I accidentally planted the heel of my sock into a murky puddle of red liquid. My mind went blank with disgust. It's like when your socks get wet with water times a million. <laughs> gross, gross, gross. Calm down, Sayaka. This was just a slaughterhouse. This was just a place where livestock was chopped up into meat. It's perfectly natural. There's nothing unusual about this room at all. The blood, the chunks of flesh and bone. Probably all just from animals. Oh, and I gotta explore it? Of course I do. Well, at least there'll be stuff here to check out. It's absolutely soaked with blood. There's no doubt countless living things here have been killed. The infamous buckets of blood. My nemesis in this game. Filthy buckets litter the room. Each one was stuffed with reddish black globs of meat and quivering yellow and white liquid, and most of them femur like bones adorned the surface. But one of them seemed to be a far more horrid stew than the others. Ugh. Well, so much for it being animals, right? And that's because one of them was full of arms. Human arms. Several of them jutting out above the bucket lip and practically waving at passers-by. <laughs> Screams are strange beasts because they basically override all sense of logic and reason within a person's mind. I wonder if this is what alerted the uh, that guy to know she was there. Because we saw at the beginning of the chapters ended with her basically being dragged off by that guy, and we know there was no coming back from that. Naho wasn't going to save her. Quite, 
Quite... Quite naturally, quite automatically in my shock, a scream forced its way out from the inside of my body, from the very pit of my stomach. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. My senses had become razor sharp. I could faintly hear footsteps approaching from the hall outside the room. My stomach tightened, stopping the next scream in my throat. I was sure of it. In the corridor just outside this room, someone or something was coming this way. And judging by sound, it sure wasn't Naho. Another scream threatened to slip out. I quickly stifled it. The last thing I needed was to give away my position. Whoever this was was getting closer and closer. I had to act. Oh, are we gonna have a choice here? The hallway outside was just a straight shot. So escaping the room without being seen wasn't an option. Hiding was my only hope. But hiding where? Ooh, okay, okay. Uh, inside the cabinet. If I remember correctly, wasn't this cabinet- did someone hide in this in the first game and there was something not good in there? I can't remember. There's nothing good in this room. The footsteps were approaching fast. I ran over to the large cabinet on the other side of the room. The doors opened without difficulty, but they were the sort that automatically closed when left untreated. Oh well, no time for second guessing now. I turned around and jammed myself end first into the closet, grabbing the edges of the closing doors with my fingers and pulling them for all my worth. Shrinking my body into the cramped closet, I prayed silently for the footsteps to pass by this room. I'm guessing he's going to be dragging somebody in here and chop them up and she's going to have to try and stay quiet. But then the person making those footsteps was probably the same person who turned on the light in here, so I didn't honestly hold out much hope. Rapidly, my thoughts grew darker. Worst case scenarios began flashing through my mind, one after another. I grasped my quivering mouth and violently shaking shoulders in a vain attempt to calm myself down. I clenched my eyes shut and willed myself to swallow any sounds that may have otherwise leaked out. Naho, Naho, please help me. I don't think Naho gives a shit about you. She's looking for Kibiki. That's all she cares about. I peeked through the gap in the door, and my fears were confirmed. I was no longer alone in this room. The thing that was in here with me was horrible. I 
He seemed not quite human, but not really anything else either. And whatever he was, I was scared to death of him. On second thought, maybe he was human. He just had a grotesque face and an abnormally large body. Not to mention a zombie-like disposition. He was horrifying. No, oh, here we go. Yep. 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 She's gonna be cut up and she's gonna have to try not to scream. He had the limp body of a girl tossed over his shoulder. He walked over to the blood covered table at the center of the room and violently threw her down onto it. Oh, that's unfortunate that she's still alive. I was hoping at least maybe she'd be knocked out. Letting out a moan of agony, she came to. My god, she was still alive. Is that, um, that's, is that Nana? Oh, so I, maybe this is happening at the same time as everybody else. Or, I mean, that's not to say that there couldn't be someone else whose legs have been severed at the thigh. I'm just trying to see, like, her hair? Is, okay. Uh, her legs have been severed at the thigh, like, completely cut off. How could anyone do something like that? <sighs> A man straddled the girl and tied both her arms into metal restraints attached to the table. No, what was he planning on doing to her? Maybe best you don't look. Oh no. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It was- did I hide in the wrong spot? He was coming this way. No, 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 no. Please, no. Oh, I'm hoping there's not something in the cabinet that he's going to grab. Maybe I should have hid under the table! Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so I guess I'm in the right spot. The man passed right by the standing closet, instead turning his attention toward the nearby corner of the room where he began rummaging through a toolbox. Ooh. So if I'd been under the table, maybe he would have reached for something eventually and saw, saw me there. He was utterly careless about it, tossing aside any tools he didn't need. Hammers and drills were clanging on the ground with some sliding under the table. Okay, well, yep, that confirms it. <laughs> Each time a tool fell, he'd bend down and scoop it up. If I had hidden under that table, I absolutely would have been found just now. Now I kind of wish I had just to get to, you know, see what the bad end would have been, but I, of course, will go back and get it. Mm. Uh oh, pliers. Ooh. Before long, he pulled out a large pair of pliers. Returning to the girl's side, he once again stepped up onto the table and straddled her body. Ooh. Ooh. What is he going to do with those exactly? Oh, there's so many possibilities. <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. I thought maybe he was gonna like take off her fingers or something. Oh, he's gonna rip her cheek out. Ah! Wordlessly, the enormous beast clamped down on the squirming girl's cheek and squeezed with all his might. Ugh. 
して強引に口を開けさせたと思ったら、大きなペンチを差し込んだ。Then, as far as I was able to determine from my vantage point, he'd forced her mouth open and shoved the pliers inside. Oh, is he gonna pull out her, her tongue, right? I was gonna say her teeth, but they like to go for the tongue in this game. Why are you watching, Psyche? I know it's like morbid curiosity, but ugh. Mmm. Oh, this is making me uncomfortable. <laughs> He readjusted his grip on the handle, then skillfully began opening the two metal prongs while simultaneously pushing them down her throat. Oh, it's the squicking, the squishing sound. Ugh. No, stop. I just want this to be over. Ugh. Mm. Finally, grasping the girl's tongue with his pliers, the man suddenly yanked his arm upward in one single powerful movement, tearing it from her mouth. And then, of course, you choke to death on your own blood. Ugh, what a way to go. Does he have a does he have a tongue、uh, bucket too? I think he does. I think there was a tongue bucket. I heard the sound of her mouth frothing over, and after a moment of squirming, all her movements ceased completely. That's when I lost it. Tears were streaming down my face, and I began peeing myself uncontrollably. Urine was pooling around the bottom of the cabinet. Bet you wish you'd gone to the bathroom before, didn't you? <laughs> Frantically contracted my stomach, forcing myself to stop peeing. If any of it leaked out from here and gave my position away, I'd be a goner for sure. <laughs> This game has a real weird thing about girls and having to go pee. Like, I don't know if there's like some stuff leaking out from the writer into this, but、uh, there's a little bit too much mention of girls having to use the bathroom and having to pee. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'm looking too much into this, but. <laughs> My stomach immediately fought this sudden denial with a painful cramp. Please, please don't do this now. The man tossed the severed tongue into an aluminum bucket at his feet, then roughly threw the pliers back into the toolbox with an ear splitting clatter. He grabbed the bucket containing the tongue and slowly disappeared from the room. <laughs> Somebody just died out there. I was in shock. What I'd seen had literally scared the piss out of me. I didn't think that ever actually happened. I had to get out of this room. If I stayed here until he came back, and if he found my hiding place, I could easily be the next one to die on that table. Slowly and shakily, I opened the cabinet doors and reemerged. I wonder if I can check the body and confirm who that is. Ooh, ooh, lovely. Ah,、uh, I think that is Nana. I, it's been a, it's been a couple of episodes, so, ah,、uh, I try to remember that uniform does look similar. I'm trying to think if she had the bow in her hair. The girl was still as a board. She almost looked alive, albeit gravely wounded. But her mannequin-like lack of any emotion whatsoever said it all.
I stared at this fresh corpse and just felt so many conflicting emotions welling up inside me. I exited the room, fighting back more screams from the pit of my stomach that seemed insistent on coming out. Well, I guess we're not gonna check then. And I doubt she's gonna want to go back in. What is this place? If I'm dreaming, somebody wake me up, please. But I knew it wasn't a dream. I accepted that this place was real, even though it differed greatly from any reality I've ever known before. I... My brain was quickly nearing its breaking point. A stupefying fog clouded my mind's circuits. Oh, is that it? Were we doing anything else? Days passed in this sweltering, isolated bunker. I couldn't even say how many. Like, what a time jump! My cell phone battery ran out after a while, and my watch died too. I was lost, completely. But I never stopped looking for Naho. Well, I'm pretty sure Naho stopped looking for you. She's only concerned with finding one person. I hadn't eaten anything, I hadn't drunk anything, and I'd slept so many times I couldn't even begin to estimate how long I'd been trapped here. She's got that piece of chocolate, right? She didn't even get to have that chocolate. Yeah, here's the chocolate, and then that's when... That's so sad, and then she lost her chocolate. Her last, like, grip on the real world and her sanity. I'm just like, now I know what's gonna happen to Sayaka, and now I'm just like, okay, but when's it gonna happen? When's he gonna find her? The chocolate my mom gave me was still in my pockets, but I couldn't bring myself to eat it. I felt like it represented an important bond between me and her. Uh-oh, here he is. Uh-oh. Well, here's the thing. It's like, it doesn't matter if I had... Doesn't matter if I survived that last encounter. Like, we know Sayaka's gonna die, no matter what. <sighs> he probably just doesn't have the energy to try and run anymore. She just got completely forgotten about. Oh, you know, there it is. Oh, Saika, you just seem like such a just a good, normal person trying to help your friend. Oh, Sachiko. <laughs> Wow, that was... holy shit, that was a really short episode. Damn. Okay, well you know what, we definitely have time to go back and get that bad end. At least. <laughs> I love even she's like, are you sure about this player? Are you trying to get me killed? Yes, I am. Would I really be okay under the table? Not the best choice, but I guess there really weren't too many other options. Either way, I couldn't afford to hesitate at a time like this. I had to follow my instincts. Fortunately, the table was pretty low to the ground, so I did have some cover. Nevertheless, or nonetheless, I prayed for the footsteps to pass by without coming in. Yeah, 
then the person making those footsteps was probably the same person who turned on the light, so I didn't ha uh, hold out much hope. Okay, so she's, I think she's saying the same things here, so we'll skip on ahead. What? What was happening? That was the sound of a girl in pain. The man had apparently dropped someone onto the table, and she was either injured or being injured. I could hear an unearthly scream from the other side of the table above me. My body became rigid. Oh, here we go. Crap. He bent down to pick that up. He'd see me for sure. And he's gonna be like, peekaboo! <laughs> he was a very strange, horrifying creature. He seemed not quite human, but not really anything else either. And whatever he was, I was scared to death of him. Okay, she's repeating herself again. So we'll just skip on ahead. I just, bad as it is to say, I just want to see what happens. I feared as much for my life as any human being can. I was frightened, afraid, terrified. There's no word strong enough. I was flailing my arms and legs and doing everything I possibly could to break free from his grip. But this man was strong as an ox. He wasn't letting go. I was fairly certain he could crush my throat with his bare hands if he wanted to. <laughs> oh, it's just so sad that she's calling out for her mommy multiple times. The man drew me up by my neck and violently threw me towards the center of the room. It was almost as though he was proving my hypothesis. The tissue and bones in my throat scraped together with a sickening, unnatural sound. I gasped for air. My trachea was in pieces. I could feel my consciousness drifting away. I wasn't sure why, but he then suddenly let out a, a blood-curdling moan and made a beeline towards the room's only exit. Is it Sachiko's coming? As he ran out, he turned around and slammed his hand into the heavy iron door, and it began slowly lurching closed. <laughs> I 
I was locked in. I knew it right away. I ran toward the door as best as I could manage, but I already knew I wouldn't be able to get it open again. The girl I'd heard screaming was strapped onto the surface of the now overturned table, dangling helplessly. Well, I wasn't expecting this way to go, just leaving them there to die, I guess? Days passed. I couldn't even begin to guess how many. Like, I wonder what sent him away. Like, why did he hesitate to kill them? No light ever returned to that blood-drenched pitch-black room. And the girl I was trapped with hadn't said a word for a long time. I knew it smelled in here. I knew it was cold and that I was in pain, but I couldn't sense any of it anymore. Was I alive? Was I dead? I wasn't sure it even mattered. I just wanted to leave that room. Somebody please let me out. Interesting. So at first I was thinking, I'm like, well, maybe it's not as bad because like, I thought that basically he was just going to kill her right then and there. And I was like, okay, well, at least he ended her suffering quickly rather than having her like slowly starve to death and be killed anyway. But then that's worse because she's still starved to death, but now it's in a pitch black room with her trachea collapsed. And same with the other girl, it's like, at least, I hate to say it, but when she got her tongue ripped out, like, that was it. She was dead. Instead, she had to, like, slowly bleed out to death uh, with her legs chopped off. Like, so, yeah, probably worse for the both of them. All right, well, let's go ahead and let's get into the next... Wow, damn. We're just kind of, like, flying through this, it feels like. So Shangri-La is the next chapter. I wonder who we're going to be focusing on this time. Oh! Okay, more Shige. Alright. This will be interesting, because with him, we got little glimpses of his insanity, but uh, I definitely want to know more about, like, how he got to that point. It was, uh, his was one of the more interesting turns. I deserve punishment for my actions. Each time I took a photograph with my phone, its flash made the school wall shine a bright, heavenly white. This was a place of solitude. Only she and I, and another soul to be found. I just can't stay away. Ooh. Oh, is that Miss Yue? I was acutely aware the hand in which I held my cell phone had begun sweating. Damn, we're getting right into this, huh? <laughs> okay. And my breathing had become uncomfortably heavy. I was getting steadily more excited. Oh, God. He's so creepy. And it was all because of her. A perfect flower brightly adorned the, f uh, the wall with its myriad cl uh, colors. Such was the departed female form spread before me. When I first encountered her, it took me several moments just to comprehend what I was seeing. I'd never beheld a person with such grief uh, grievous injuries before. I'm not even certain the word injuries would apply in a situation like this. What state of mind could cause someone to do this to another human being? I was certain this action had been wrought by human hands, largely because both her arms had been nailed to the wall with construction-grade linchpins. Based solely on the dugout abdomen, seemingly without the use of tools, the intestines lying on the floor, the smashed eyeballs, and the exposed jaw. One might think she'd been torn apart by wild animals, but the linchpins and the faint traces of bloody handprints here and there proved otherwise. 
だがこの造形はどうだこれには誰かの意志が情熱が宿っているじゃないか And yet, this bold, finely crafted display of her body shows a clear will and a fiery passion on the part of the orchestrator. Ugh. Ugh. It's like he, it's almost like he、um, is praising the person who did this. It's so fucked up. The blood that splattered far and wide shone in flesh, in my flash, like a bright red flame. Sorry, I'm like so taken aback by this. I was not expecting this.、Um, like, I'm having trouble reading right now. Let's try that again. The blood that splattered far and wide shone in my flash like a bright red flame, and whole chunks of flesh were strewn about like flower petals. This flayed, eviscerated corpse with arms outstretched and nailed to the wall brought to mind images of Jesus nailed to the cross. But she was even purer than that. There was no self sacrifice here, no lesson to be taught. Whoever did this clearly had fun with it. They enjoyed killing her, they enjoyed destroying her. <laughs> I suppose there are animals who kill not for food but for sport, leaving the carcasses of their prey behind. Of course, even intelligent animals like the lion, monkey, and dolphin can be subject to occasional exclusionism and abuse within their ranks. Like, the thing about the darkening is. Does it basically bring up a person's kind of deepest, darkest desires and kind of brings them to the surface in a really fucked up way, like Naho's obsession with her sensei to a point where she just became like one sided and would do whatever it took to make him happy? And with Morshig, like, did he have these thoughts deep down inside of him and the darkening and being in Heavenly Host kind of like brought them to the surface? And then Ayumi's like,、uh, her obsession with. Maybe not obsession is not the right word, but like her crush on、um, Satoshi kind of made her a little bit insane, like her and Naomi fighting. And Naomi has obviously, there's something with Seiko, like some deep seated feelings there that just came out in a weird way. It's interesting, very interesting. Yet only humans possess the capacity to turn their violent impulses into art. All I can see is Miss Yue. I'm trying to think if there be any other adults other than, like, there's Kibiki, there's the cameraman, but the only other adult I think that is around that we've seen it was Miss Yue, and I don't want to believe that's her because, uh, what a horrible end. I don't want to believe that's, that's how she went. Because in one of the bad ends in the first game, it was her, she was crushed、um, by falling rubble. Not like this. My internal monologue had become soliloquy, if only for a moment. What was it about this girl that fascinated me so? She could be a teenager.、Uh, I, I assume she's an adult, but she could just be a high schooler. Witnessing the aftermath of a murderer's actions did provide a certain freeing sense of childlike helplessness, to be sure. I think it's because she's not in uniform. But why had she in particular stricken my fancy? He said the thing. He said the thing. This whole school is like a vertebral corpse party. I've seen so many other bodies since I've arrived here, but none like hers. The moment I first laid eyes on her will stay with me always. Not just the sight, but the smell too, hanging in the air like steam after a hot bath. She was young, junior or senior high age. Okay, never mind. I, she is a student. But that's about all I could determine. Her uniform was tattered and soaked through with blood, and there was no student ID name tag to be found. The only reason I believed her to be a she, in fact, was due to the presence of a makeup bag and the ornate tortoiseshell jewelry box on the ground nearby. Or、oh, the tortoiseshell jewelry box. That's the thing that、um, we found in a previous episode. I was like,、uh, I would say, based on what I can see,、uh, she looks pretty female. I don't think you'd need those hints. I don't have the slightest clue who she may be, so why am I so drawn to her? The alarm on my cell phone sounded as if in answer.
Production of The Barber of Seville was airing on the MHK Educational Network that evening, and Mayu had asked me to record it for her. Being away from my TV at the time, I'd set a few reminder alarms on my phone to sound at regular intervals before it. It's just creepy, just like that snap back to like, oh yeah, this was my life before all this. Like I led a, a normal life. I was going to record some stuff on TV and be reminded of Ma Mayu while he's just like gushing over this displayed body. Mayu is most renowned for her love of sweets and accessories and such. And I often wondered if anyone else knew how much she enjoyed the works of Rossini. Mayu Ah, bright and beautiful Mayu, beloved by all who knew her. I was the only one aware of the weaknesses that lay within her heart. Therefore, I was the only one who could truly protect her. Wow, peak nice guy material over here. Why don't you call her my lady while you're at it? Oh god, he's even creeping on- uh, Like, I hope he's not saying that in a creepy way, but uh, everything that Morshiga says now, I am going to interpret in the worst way. Speaking of weaknesses, I wonder what's become of Mochita's little sister. What is it? Oh. Oh, that's right. That's right. What is it with What is it with everybody's obsession with Yuka? There was that other guy too. Like, what is it with everybody wanting to chase Yuka down? She's not my favorite character, but Jesus. I certainly enjoyed chasing her around earlier. I gave her quite a fright. I adored watching her run for Dear life, it was an act befitting a psychopathic pedophile. Yet I am no such thing. Why then did I glean such joy from it? I simply found her frail, cowering countenance to be irresistibly precious. Oh, and it's just like extra creepy when he talks about how like, oh, Mayu is so innocent, only I can protect her. And then he has these feelings about like loving to torment people who are innocent and frail. The sight of an overwhelmingly weak person standing before me, utterly helpless and alone, elated my very soul. The sensation was nearly orgasmic. Yet, this was a friend's sister. For all the torment I'd caused, I certainly intended no harm. This is going to be a real tough episode for me to get to, or this, or this chapter. If we're focusing on Morishig, it's going to be very interesting, but it is going to give me all the squicks. All of the squicks. The perceived threat I represented just spawned such panic and horror within her, I couldn't help myself. Thinking of back upon it still makes me smile. It's like your true self, the one that you've been hiding deep down because you want to be like, you know, you have to have like a socially acceptable persona. No, this isn't right. This isn't who I am. Could it be this nightmarish location is messing with my head? Indeed, this wouldn't do at all. If I were to return to the real world with Mayu and the others without first discarding this new me, I would no longer be able to live the way I did before. Is it your, the new you or is it the you that was always there, you know? Alright, chapter 5, or episode 5, Shangri-La. Ah, oh, yes, these girls. Okay, so I guess we're jumping back. Maybe we're not doing more shake the whole time. Crap, my phone. Is it okay? Strap broke. Nobody in here either. Where did everybody go? Hard to believe you were just in the student council room. I guess that Sachiko charm is what did us in, huh? This wasn't just some ordinary school building. Some fellow student council members and classmates and I all did that weird ritual, and then I passed out. I thought maybe it was anemia or something. But when I woke up, I found myself in this thoroughly disturbing place. And my friends were nowhere to be found. 
トウコたちのいたずらだと思ったんだけどどうもそんな雰囲気じゃない At first I thought maybe this was just Toko playing a prank on me, but I quickly realized it went far beyond that. I got angry, I screamed, I cowered in fear and begged anyone who could hear me to stop doing this, but ultimately I was just talking to air. This all felt like a bad dream. And I prayed in my heart of hearts that that's all it was. Because I knew I wouldn't be able to stand being in this horrible place all alone. I just wanted to see someone, to be with someone. I just wanted someone to call my name. I'm Mitsuki Yamamoto, an 11th grader at、uh, Byakuden Senior High School. I serve as clerk for the student council. Well, obviously, this thing catches my attention right away. A decaying human head has been forcibly crammed into the top left cubby. It mustn't have been easy to make it fit, as there are tiny pieces of flesh and scalp tissue all along the frame. <laughs> Who would have done something like this? <laughs> you know, when I first. When I, oh. when I saw my first body here, I couldn't stop throwing up, but I'm starting to think. Uh, I think I'm starting to get desensitized. I just hope the others are okay. The door is frozen in place as if it's just a decoration on the wall. It doesn't even rattle when pushed. I'm not going to accomplish anything by staying in one place. I need to keep looking for my friends. Okay, they're just moving for me, I guess? Alright. We were in the same hallway, but separated by a huge hole in the floor. Still, I finally found someone. Kensuke Kurosaki, a classmate of mine from 2 4. After being alone in here all this time, finally, a friend. I could barely contain my exuberance. Oh shit! If I recognize that, um, the uniform, isn't that, and that guy, I think, too, um,、uh, this is the school that that creepy guy came from, the one who was chasing around Yuka. Ooh. Oh, he's gotta show up, right? He's gonna show up at some point. That's a shame because I think this guy, I remember, if he's who I thought from the first game. He's like a really nice guy who actually tried to save Yuka and was trying to be a good dude and he died for it. どうしてこんなボロい学校に気絶してる間に誰かに連れてこられたってことかもしんないけどこんなことするやつなんてうんまともじゃないよ黒崎見たここって死体だろ見たよ人生初の体験だよリアルでしょんべん漏らしかけたぜ Here's another talk about pee. Dakedo, Maji de Yabito Mo. Hayak Kizami of Kuroi Tat Sagaste, Koko das Tsinaito. I can't remember. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look this up. It might be spoiling it, but I'm trying to remember what the heck that guy's name was just to see if I'm right about this. Was Kazami, was that his name, or is that just a random person? Oh shit! It is Yuya Kazami. That's him. I was right. Wow. I am impressed with my, myself that I remembered it from the,、uh, the uniform. And like, this guy looks 
familiar. Oh, uh, well, we know none of these people are going to have uh, a good end. Urasaki carefully inched closer to the hole in the corridor, bit by bit, and took a good long look inside. She's probably going to be taken out by uh, Kazami because uh, I remember like a bunch of the bodies being found, and I think they were killed by him. そ、そんな慌てなくていいってしばらくここにいてよ。I guess I can be kind of a pain in the ass sometimes. In class and in student council meetings alike, I'm always trying to take charge. I suppose I'll have to be all docile and sweet like Emmy if I want to be treated like a lady. The time display on my phone read 2909. Kurosaki's taking an awfully long time. I sure hope nothing's happened to him. It was Masato Fukori. Uh, Fukori? Oh boy, I'm saying his name wrong. <laughs> Despite the fact they just said it, a classmate of mine and a student council president. He always had a scowl on his face and dug his heels into the ground on everything, but right now, his cold obstinance was as welcome as could be. <laughs> Wait, wasn't that exactly the same thing I said to Kurosaki? I really need to get some new material. あ、なんだよ。いつもの yeah, you don't want to find Kazami. <laughs> you don't want him to find you. まだ。あいつみたいに体力も精神力もある人間ならこんな状況でも。とりあえず黒崎と合流して、それからみんなを探そう。じゃあ、俺たちもこっち側から迂回できる道を探してみるか。大丈夫かな。<laughs> あたしたちがここ離れてる間に黒崎が来たら。その時はあいつがここで待っていてくれるさ。むしろ健介と俺たち両方で迂回路を探せば合流が早くなるかもしれない。それに探してるうちに他のみんなと会えるかもしれないだ
the cast interviews or whatever they're called. We'll listen to those and then we'll wrap up this episode for today. Okay, so we have... Oh, uh, there we go. Naho's voice actress. みなさんこんにちは。おはようございます。こんばんは。さえのきなほやくの she sounds much more animated. <笑>はわわはわわはわしてそのツイッターであわわわわってつぶやきましたらよそんななんかそのなんかなこさん普通だったと思いますけどみたいなちょっと意地悪をされ今日現場にはですねうわどうしようこのこのなんかそのにゃ